Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Gugule Tukrele. Now the festive season is around the corner and if you find that you are dreading buying expensive gifts for family and friends on top of all your other financial responsibilities, well it's certainly time that you change your approach to gift giving. In studio to tell us more is Eunice Sibia, who's the Head of Consumer Education at FNB to give us some advice as to how we can best manage gift expectations during the festive season. So good to have you with us today. Thank you, Coco. I, uh, to be here. I think I need my gift expectations to be managed as well because I want many things. I want mm. a new wardrobe, I'd like a new car, I'd like mm -hmm, this, that mm -hmm. and the other. And so who from? Oh, hubby dearest must make a plan. <laughs> I pity him already. Exactly. <laughs> but that's exactly where we need to start because so often uh, people get accustomed to receiving gifts of yes. an exorbitant yes. nature. Yes. Uh, so uh, I take it it starts with a conversation maybe where you say, be honest and upfront and mm, that uh, nice wardrobe you want, I actually can't afford it this Christmas. Actually, it starts with a conversa conversation with self. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. It starts with a conversation with self and on two, it's two pronged to this conversation with self. It's what I can afford for other people mm. and what I, my own expectations from other people. So we, we now have to look at a reality. Reality is that we are all financially constrained yeah all right and over the years we have shifted away from the actual good deed of giving mm. we've now moved to the what what am i getting we've moved away from the intent to the value mm. so we're now putting price to the gift so if someone gives you a small onion, a PS chocolate you know, i'm like what are you taking me from exactly for? i want this and that and that so we need to, 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 to start walking back to the, the, the main intention, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and also making sure that I understand the financial position that I'm in. Most of us are financially constrained. Therefore, I cannot be expecting miracles from other people, much as I feel it won't be fair for other people to be expecting new wardrobes <laughs> from me. So all I'm saying is maybe we need to just hoosa for a moment and say, by the way, what is this that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about giving, can we stick to giving? So whatever I receive came from a good place, came from a good heart, and maybe it should end there. Mm -hmm. Let's remove the, the what, let's remove the value. So P.S. chocolates are welcome for Christmas in my Very much so. Okay. It has a beautiful meaning, I mean message. Can we just appreciate the message? Exactly. And not, not the price of the P.S. chocolate. Okay, lesson learned. <laughs> Expectations have been managed. But I take it this takes us back to the all-important principle that you continue to teach us, the B word, budgeting. Yes. And yes. that's where we need to start, right? We need to start there. And we need to start with individuals, household, and involving children and maybe other family members if you know that that's where the expectations are. Mm. Remember that, like I said, we, we now have trends set to say, ha, I know from Google I get the best of this. Where does poor Google get all of this every single year? Mm. And, and talking about the years and the trends, just to, to throw in a, a statistical uh, point, 68% of uh, credit active consumers are over indebted. That's a huge number, 68%. 68%, they're either in arrears, one to three months in arrears, they, they've been skipping payments, some are under debt review and debt collection, and some are now going to the repossession, repossession process, cars and houses and everything. Guys, let us, let us go back and, and shift our focus. Where are we? What is it that we, we, we where are we heading, financially mm -hmm. speaking? We need to put a halt now. We need to make that financial U-turn now. Otherwise, if we don't, 2016 is going to be much rougher than mm -hmm. 2015. Especially given the rising interest rates, like you say. Bon, more is coming in 2016. So if we don't take a moment now and take stock now, we are heading for disaster. If 68% of consumer, act, I mean, credit active consumers are already strained. Exactly. Significantly under pressure, like you say, yes. getting used to spending yes. money. So can we have. really now, you know, be raising expectations and, and continuing as, as if nothing has happened? I don't, think, I don't think it's wise to do that. So again, to your point now, as a family, I have a meeting with self. Mm. If you have a partner, have a meeting with your partner. If you have children, have a household meeting. I mean, has a, have a meeting with, with everybody because we are talking about household budget. Mm. And for kids, this is where you like saying, guys, those games, 
I'm not ready yet. How best do we go about that? Because we know with children, that's often where they pull out our heartstrings and you take out the credit card or uh, purchase it on overdraft and just to make sure that you appease them. You mean, you mean that credit card that's almost maxed for some people? Yes, that and one. And want to put a PS whatever game and this and that. I think, I think we need to be genuine. We need to be honest to ourselves, including the little ones. Because you having a conversation with them, you're actually indirectly teaching them that, you know, not every day is the same. We have mm -hmm. moments where things are pretty much okay. I can get you this and, and I can take you on holiday. But there are times where the chips are down. Mm -hmm. and, and have an honest conversation with your children to say, I love you more than I did yesterday. But you know what, that game hmm, ain't coming. But I can give you this. I can do that. Or let's all work together and plan nice uh, uh, smarter so that in January I can do this for you. Or in 2016, I'll be ready to do one, two, three. What about financial gifts? I take it uh, if you can't afford to buy exorbitant gifts, can you perhaps give them a hundred rand and say, with this money, open up some kind of savings account? I'm glad you asked that because that was my next point, to say maybe we need also to change, to shift the focus on what type of gifts we get. Mm -hmm. So financial gifts is a good way. You, you arrange with the parents of the child or if it's your own children, you take them to the bank with the required documentation. You open an account to say, here's my gift for you for 2015. And the, this, let, let's start. I'm planting a seed for you. Mm. We're going to watch this tree grow together. We're going to work towards watering this, the, this seed together. And this tree is going to be massive. It's a good lesson. It's a good gift. And you are now shifting the focus from uh, on this child to say, oh, it's not necessarily getting this huge truck with big wheels in a week's time the wheel is going to be the one wheel is going to be out the door and the yeah. other one is under the bed you know kind of thing but let us depending on the children's ages again mm -hmm. and and but it's the conversations that we need to start having what about adults difficult part the eh? adults with expectations <laughs> again the very adults most of them are under constraints themselves financially so the way you feel the situation that we are in mm. so am i you know so we just honestly say this is what I could afford to bring you. This is what I could afford to put together for you. And it's again being creative. What is it that I can make for my mother? What is it can, that I can make for granny? If you're good at baking, bake them. Bake them some, some cakes and not necessarily a purchased gift. So we need to be creative, but we need to be authentic and genuine. So it's not putting something rough and dirty and like, ah, so long as there's a, a, a tag for Auntie, you know, Auntie Rose on, and Granny's Matapelo. No, 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 no. It, it still needs to be genuine mm -hmm. and coming from a good heart. But you are being realistic in terms of your financial position and what is it that you can give. So true. I want to uh, lean on the stat that you gave us about 68% of credit active consumers being in debt. What about the gift to yourself? Uh, so often some people get a 13th check or are lucky enough to get bonuses yes. as well. Isn't this the opportune time for them to maybe pay off their credit card? or add a little bit more money to their bond payment? Google, every single day I'm preaching the same thing now to say budget for that bonus. My mom used to say a lump sum of money, a lump sum of money looks, it feels like a, a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. You come from the shop with a loaf of bread, it's nice and sealed. You open that seal, you take the first slice. The next thing you know, you're taking the last crust. And like, wh what happened to the bread? Yeah. Bonuses usually evaporate like that because most people and often we don't budget for the bonus. You're rubbing your hands already with excitement, waiting for that windfall to say, my goodness, th those zeros, ah, they are coming. <laughs> and you're smiling, you're dreaming, but you don't know exactly what is it that you're going to do with it. Again, let's go back to the 68% of consumers that are mm. over indebted. Isn't it wise, a gift to self, kill the debt. Kill the small and ones. Because those are easy to kill. Maybe it's a couple of a thousand rand, eight hundred rand. They're over. I mean, in arrears, or maybe you have a clothing account or some small and a, a debt that is easy to squash. Kill them. That is very fulfilling. And the bigger ones, maybe home loans and vehicle finance. Mm. You can be a premium or two ahead. That's a beautiful gift for yourself or to yourself. And that will help you come January, which we know is January. When it comes to financial terms, We're all going right? to be grey in January. Oh We're going to be worried. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in anticipation for that, do that. Mm -hmm. And at least don't plan to skip in April because now you've paid ahead. Paying ahead saves you the interest and you're going to pay it off much earlier. So it is a good thing. Um, in Sizulu, they say we are katazela. I always say katazel into that account. Katazel. Katazel. Just, <laughs> just throw in a 50 rand, an extra 100 rand. This is now throughout the year. Mm. Now that we're talking about bonuses, have, have, imagine your bonus and build, uh, cutting it out into a pie. Drop a pie chart to say, 
This much goes towards all my debt. This much goes towards this. This much go. Plan for the bonus. Because the next thing you know, in January, you're just going to be gray like everyone else, not knowing what happened to that money. All right? And we know the expectations. I mean, the, the, the financial responsibilities School that come fees. with January. School fees, stationery, uniform. Those pants I have been short since October. Yeah. The, the shoes have been tight on this poor child since June last year. So those are the things that we need to be working towards. Can we just plan to be smarter with our finances this year? We've made mistakes in the prior years. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's wise, and I don't think we're going to be proud of ourselves if we keep repeating the same mistakes. Exactly, especially when we, we cannot. When we're getting so much tighter in the financial cycle we and we see interest to. rates being uh, increased. We cannot afford to. Well, we'll pause it there because we need a quick reminder quickly as to uh, how not to be grey come January and to tratazel. Let's recap on the key takeaway points. You know, so we've said quite a bit, but uh, for someone who wants to uh, just have a quick reminder of how to manage the gift expectations for December and navigate their way through the holiday season, what do they need to remember? I think, number one, we spoke about good deals uh, on gifts. Um, remember that it's giving and not the what. Remember the intent versus mm. the value. Okay, and point number two, we spoke about managing those expectations. We are, most of us, financially constrained, so you don't expect people, um, you wouldn't feel great if people expect expensive gifts from you, and, and likewise, you cannot. So exactly. can we just take the, the, the financial situation and make it real, and just be smarter with the gifts? Um, put together gifts that are, are manageable, beautiful, and, and still, you know, exchanging gifts in a good spirit. However, do not put price or, or on the gifts. And we, we say that re let's, let's work towards reducing that percentage of over-indebtedness. 68% is not good at all. Very high. And, and uh, when we're talking about spending less this festive season, there's again around gifting, around entertainment, plan what is it that you're going to do. And, you know, just one point that came to mind, there are people that are not receiving uh, bonuses in December, mm. but you know their level of excitement is equal, if not more, than those that are receiving bonuses. So true. And, and I work for a financial institution. Mm -hmm. They come in December and apply for loans because the group or the family is going out on entertainment or on a trip. And I don't, I need the money. So they take loans out in December and they come back in January to take loans out for the January uh, expenses. It is painful, it is sad, it is almost wrong, mm -hmm. it is very wrong. So let's kill those tendencies live within your means exactly can we just remember to live within our means and and the gifts for children gifts for for, for adults uh, both family and extended family members gifts for partners mm. uh, uh, google to hubby and hubby back okay sometimes we don't need to exchange gifts because we we have a household plan we are working towards something like i still love you my dear you're getting nothing from me. Does love have interest? Does love have <laughs> value? <laughs> so it's those, it, it's just taking a moment to say, can we be real? Can we be in the moment, in the current situation that is not looking very good? Mm. We cannot be seen to be repeating uh, or pretending as if things are hunky-dory outside. That's true. Let us be financially smart. Thank you so much for your sound advice. Always giving us uh, new uh, bits of knowledge and living within our means. Nothing yes. more important than that. So why not uh, prepare for your 2016 financial wellness now before we actually enter into the new year? Well, that's where we leave it for personal finance tonight. A big, big thank you once more to Eunice Sibia, Head of uh, Consumer Education at FNB for joining us. Be sure to get in touch with us and tell us your thoughts and views on uh, managing expectations and hopefully entering 2016 as a debt-free individual. You can send your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Gukumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>